Auckland's population is projected to rise to 2 million by early next decade. And if we're looking to move 2 million people around safely and efficiently, we need well-connected and planned infrastructure. If we want to build our way out of our current and future infrastructure challenges, then we will be lifting our investment, both as a percentage of GDP and in raw numbers as well. We have to do this. All of this is important because New Zealand has an infrastructure deficit and it has built up over decades. It's the result of a number of different factors, but these include lack of long-term planning, ad hoc uh, piecemeal development, taking the cheaper option, failing to see the need for integrated planning. All of these things have occurred over decades in New Zealand. We're not going to make the mistake of previous governments and scramble to build infrastructure when it's too late. This investment is about making sure that Auckland can flourish as it grows. We will look to a range of financing options and the cost of this will be spread over a number of years. But they have to be taken. These are harder decisions than the easy way out of a cheap option, but they would not have been the right decisions. To me, this is the most important infrastructure project that New Zealand has ever undertaken. We have an integrated plan for Auckland's urban development that will help shape a world-class modern city. It is crucial we get it right, and today is a very significant further step in doing so. As the Minister of Finance indicated, Cabinet has met and now endorsed tunnel light rail for the city centre to Mangere Corridor. Considering the various options and trade-offs, the benefits of tunnel light rail are as follows. Firstly, it holds the optimal opportunity for high capacity, future-proof transport that improves people's travel time and reliability of the network. It enables a more flexible alignment of the route and unlocks significant urban benefits within the corridor. Importantly, it sets the stage for future network integration, including a new harbour crossing and rapid transit to the northwest. It also avoids overwhelming Queen Street, which has had to deal with a lot of construction in recent years, and minimises the extent of construction disruption along the corridor. I do want to be very clear that myself and Cabinet gave serious consideration to all of the options. As I said before the report was released in late last year, all of the options had credible cases and would deliver significant benefits to Auckland. And I do acknowledge that some people who follow this issue carefully had a clear preference for surface light rail, which clearly does have some benefits. I have become convinced, however, along with Cabinet, that we must have a truly future-proofed option with significant capacity to cater for future growth and to be able to accommodate a fully linked up rapid transit network in the coming years. Tunnelling is required to provide the necessary frequencies and integration. Project modelling and international evidence tell us that patronage will go strong, grow strongly when this project is completed, and the material risk of surface light rail would be that capacity would be significantly stretched within 20 years of it being opened from a very significant investment. I am committed to strong ongoing engagement with the community to help ensure that tunnelled light rail is accessible to everyone in the community as well-designed metro systems around the world are. And I'm also very pleased to confirm that as part of the way we take this project forward, we are committed to safe cycling and walking access along the corridor connecting into the stations. The 24 kilometre route between the city centre and Mangere will include up to 18 stations along the route. It'll have the capacity to move up to 15,000 people per hour. That is the equivalent of approximately 14 lanes of private vehicle traffic being carried on this one line. It'll feature a reliable 32 minute travel time from the city centre to Mangere. This will shorten travel times for people right along the corridor. Trains will run every five minutes, so you can just turn up and go. From the north, light rail will start at Wynyard Quarter, travelling underground to Mount Roskill. Passengers will board the, tra the train at underground stations with provision for people with different mobility needs, including the elderly, people with prams or people with disabilities. In the city centre, we are today confirming that the line will travel via the university precinct, where there will be a station, connecting with the CRL at Aotea. In Eden Valley, light rail will likely intersect with the western line at Kingsland, and in the central isthmus, the underground route is flexible 
and doesn't have to follow particular uh, roads. So a little bit of further work will occur at the next stage to get the optimal location for those stations aligned with our urban development plans. From Mount Ross School, light rail will travel overland along State Highway 20 to Unihanga, across the Manukau Harbour, into the Mangere Town Centre and onto the airport. People will be able to board at surface level stops along the way. The earlier consultation put forward a station at Mangere Town Centre as an option. There was overwhelming community enthusiasm from the people of South Auckland for that to happen and so I'm pleased to confirm that it will today. The introduction of light rail, and can I acknowledge those local government members who are in the room today who push strongly for that outcome for their communities. The introduction of light rail is particularly significant in South Auckland for communities who live there who have been underserved for transport options for too long and experience real transport poverty. High quality, frequent, reliable public transport will unlock, unlock jobs, education, housing, urban renewal and other opportunities for the South. And I look forward to working with the local community on this exciting part of the project. For you as an Auckland commuter, Auckland Light Rail will cut travel times by up to half. It will offer affordable and consistent services. As in other international centres, light rail services will run every five minutes. So you won't need to plan out your journey. You'll just turn up and go. It'll mean e easier access to work and education, more vibrant and people-friendly uh, town centres, cleaner air for you and your family, and more affordable housing options for you. The map that you see on the board in front of you shows the rapid transit network that we currently have, primarily made up of the Auckland Heavy Rail Network and the North Shore Busway. We've also just recently opened uh, connections between Auckland Airport and the Puhanui Station and the initial stage of the Eastern Busway between Pamua and Pakaranga. This map shows the network, including projects that are currently funded and underway, and Auckland Light Rail. That includes the busway between the city centre and Westgate, the CRL which is currently being constructed, stage two of the Eastern Busway between Pamua uh, and, and Pakaranga, and the extension of rapid transit on the rail network between Papakura and Pukekohe. What you can see when you look at this map is that we're beginning to build up a London-style connected network. We have the CRL at the centre of the network like the heart. It doubles the capacity of the heavy rail network. And what you can visually see here is that the Auckland Light Rail uh, line corridor is like the spine, a north-south axis that connects the network together and enables people to make integrated journeys around the city. This map shows the full proposed network with lines to the North Shore and the North West included. A city like Auckland should already have a true linked up system like this and now is the time to get on with the job. A tunnel through the city centre future proofs the network for this expansion and it means that light rail can be extended to the North Shore and North West without having to transfer from one line to another. It's about making it work for the people who use the network. It is anticipated that the full planning and consenting stage will take approximately three years and construction six to eight years. Large projects like this in existing urban areas do take time to complete. We do however expect early stage consenting to commence and early works to commence in 2023. Light rail will be the biggest transport project in New Zealand's modern history and presents significant opportunities for the private sector. The project marks the start of a broader programme of investment in mass rapid transit, beginning a pipeline of city-wide mass rapid transit work over the coming 20 years, offering industry the opportunity to start planning forward their workload. To that point, robust industry engagement will become a priority in 2022. Today's announcement is about future-proofing Tamaki Makaurau, making life better for the people who live here today and the generations to come. Uh, today's announcement, I think, is the most important transport project that any government has embarked on for the future of our city. It's fantastic and I genuinely and warmly want to thank the government for a contribution to the cost of that investment that I know from my past experience would have been eye-watering for the Minister, uh, but one which is 
shows foresight and understands what is needed to unlock the potential of the city. Without that, we would have no way of addressing the three problems that are the biggest problems that our city faces. One is congestion, the second is transport emissions, 40% of our total carbon emissions, and the third is the need for intensification of housing in a high quality compact form. Those are the three pressing concerns of our city that cannot be adequately addressed unless we have a joined up transport system of which light rail is a critical and integral part. This is transform, uh, transformational. Uh, it will impact on our city's development, not simply for the next decade, but for the next half century. It is the largest transport infrastructure project undertaken in this country, and it's the biggest investment in much needed transport infrastructure that has ever been made. That is the significance of the announcement that we are hearing today. And clearly, that was a decision that was not taken lightly. And I acknowledge immediately that only central government has the resources that would enable us to unlock the key to meeting the challenges that this city faces. Uh, and this is a critical contribution to our city. Yes, there's a huge investment going into this, but what is the cost, I think you touched on it, uh, Minister, of not doing it? It's already calculated that we're spending 1.3 billion, or we're losing 1.3 billion dollars a year because of congestion in our city. I think that's a conservative estimate, and it's a, it's a figure that will only grow over time. Billions and billions of dollars will be lost to our city and our nation if we continue to have gridlock and we don't have a joined up rapid transit public system. So the other side of the ledger is, is this a big investment? Yes. What is the cost of not doing that investment? It's continuing to tip money down the drain because of congestion and lost productivity. What I'd say to, to all New Zealanders is that if we can get Auckland moving, more productive, more sustainable, that benefits them. But also we have a massive programme of transport and infrastructure investment right around New Zealand. We've put more money into sectors like transport and housing than we've ever seen governments do before. So everybody benefits from this. In terms of the debt, don't overstate it. It's spread over a long period of time. But it is important that we take a realistic approach and give people certainty and investment. So that's what New Zealanders will get from this. A more productive big city here in Auckland, but better investment right around New Zealand as well. Yeah, I, I met with um, um, representatives from the, the National Party earlier this week and, and I made it clear to them um, that by the time this project is finished, we may have had two changes in government. And the last thing this country needs is short-term politicking because, you know, it, it, it looks like a good idea that you're opposed to something the other side is doing. I saw four parties in Parliament come together around a congestion tax. Not going to be popular, but absolutely necessary. But to do credit to Parliament, the four parties looked at the facts and they came to the agreement that this is something that we needed to deal with the congestion problem in Auckland. And I hope that those parties can do the same thing um, in terms of light rail. This is a project that spans different terms of government and we desperately need the parties to look at the long-term needs and the long-term commitment rather than the short-term politicking, and I hope that happens. My, my guess is that this is going to take over a decade. Um, it, it will take a long time, but you know, when we made the decision to put through the Waterview Tunnel in 2008, we didn't open it until 2018. Big, train, big infrastructure projects always take time, but they never happen if you never start them. And you never start them if you don't have a financial commitment to it. So what we can celebrate today is that we have heard the financial commitment and we have heard the commitment to starting it. And that's great for our city. I see this as a legacy that will benefit future generations of, uh, of Aucklanders. I hope that um, you know, when I'm uh, in my wheelchair in my 90s, um, I'll be able to take advantage of this. But I know for sure that my kids and my grandchildren will be able to. And that's what counts for me.